Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Today is February 29th, 2020. It's a leap year. <laughs> or leap day. So what film that should I review on this particular special day? Well, why not leap year? <laughs> the romantic comedy with Amy Adams and Matthew Good. <laughs> uh, which is now celebrating its 10th anniversary, hard to believe. Um, anyway, it follows a story about a real estate worker who's about to propose to her boyfriend who's a cardiologist and they wanted to uh, be able to get married on this particular special day but unfortunately due to this tradition for the Irish she decided to go all the way to Ireland to meet an innkeeper and see maybe this will work out if that's the case yeah. I saw this in theaters uh, as a double feature with uh, Sherlock Holmes yeah, the movie with Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law along with Rachel McAdams it's not one of Amy Adams' finest um, romantic comedies yet alone her finest work I mean one of her greatest movies it's not one of Amy Adams' uh, greatest work especially with romantic comedies but I thought this was decent. I mean, yeah, it got critically panned. I get it. I know. But I watched this basically as just what it is. You know? Just a feel-good, delightful funny as described by Jim Ferguson right here. <laughs> Type of romantic comedy that's just worth watching. You know, especially if you have one of your favorite actresses, like Amy Adams. Um, because apparently she became my favorite ever since I saw her in Enchanted. I was aware that she was in the Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby. But she was also an Oscar-nominated actress for the film Junebug. She won the Sundance Award for that. And I know she was in other films like Drop Dead Gorgeous, which that was her first film. And and she's done like plenty of great work like The Fighter came out the same year as this um, The Master uh, Big Eyes Arrival Shop Objects, the HBO miniseries yeah. no doubt about it, you know, she's always a charmer <laughs> a beautiful, versatile actress. So I, I figured for this special day, why not? <laughs> yeah, it only has never before seen deleted scenes as a bonus feature. Nothing much, but hey, it's good to see some more scenes that didn't quite make it. I mean, I do wish there were more features, but I guess it's the best we could do for this DVD. They do have it on Blu-ray too. Maybe I'll find it someday you know, as an upgrade. Let's begin. Stars Amy Adams once again. Matthew Good. Adam Scott, yeah, who went on to do the TV series Parks and Recreation. He was in The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Uh, and yes, uh, he was in the sequel to Hot Tub Time Machine, and even the Krampus, yeah. John Lithgow, legendary actor, had a lot of great work that he's done in his career. I mean, like the Brian De Palma film, um, Blowout, yeah, Raising Cain, Cliffhanger, Santa Claus the Movie, <laughs> Or Ricochet, the TV series Fur Rock from the Sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he does it all. Kaylin Olsen, Nora O'Donovan, Tony uh, Rowe, Pat Laughlin, Ellen uh, Devlin, Ian 
McGinney, Peter O'Meara, and Presenzo Nicoli. It's written by Harry Alphonse and Deborah Kaplan, and it's directed by Anand Tucker, the same man who directed Hillary and Jackie, and Shop Girl. The movie begins where we meet a real estate agent, very successful woman, named Anna Brady, played by Amy Adams, who also has a father named Jack, played by John Lithgow, which um, made a conversation uh, at a local bar. She was very frustrated about her boyfriend, who's a cardiologist named Jeremy Sloan, played by Adam Scott, that he still hasn't proposed to her in four years. Her plan was to travel from Boston to Dublin, Ireland to propose to him on this special day, a leap year, February 29th, while he's there during a conference. Anna also had wishes in Irish tradition, which is Bachelor's Day, hoping that a man can propose on this particular leap day if, if they can accept it. During the flights, a storm diverts the plane to Wales. Anna had hired a boat that could take her to Cork, but due to the celebrity of the storm, she was forced ashore to a local small seaside village called Dingell, where she makes her way to a local tavern that's being run by a very surely angry Irish innkeeper named Declare O'Callaghan, played by Matthew Good. She requests him a taxi, that way he could take her all the way to Dublin. But he refuses at first, after his tavern's being threatened with foreclosure because of lack of money. But he does agree to her to drive all the way if the money is accepted. But they sat out on an old beat-up car. Along the way, she, he started making fun of her by having her fancy uh, luggage, which is Louis uh, Belton, you know, calling it Louis. Even mocks her on the beliefs of, of this leap year, thinking that a woman could propose to a man. Well... The travel became a nightmare, where it's being interrupted by a herd of cows, blocking the entire road, and Anna had suddenly stepped into cow dun while attempting to move um, the animals away, tries to clean her, her special shoes that she has, while leaning on the clan's car, which causes it to roll all the way downhill into a stream. Continuing on foot, Anna flags down a band with three travelers who turn out to be thieves. They offer her a lift, but they just took all of her luggage. And before they finally made it there, they drove out without her. Anna and the clan had eventually made their way to the roadside pub and that's where they spotted them. He gets into a fight and took um, Anna's bag but they're being ejected from the owner of the local pub because of the fighting that involves. So now um, Anna and the clan had reached a railway station decided to go to a next train. They hike up a hill near a ruins of a local castle which they ask each other what would it be like if once they grab their homes they would end up being on fire or they had to only have 60 seconds to flee which lead to an old Irish legend about a young woman who promised an elderly lord that she did not love but gave her wedding guests a sleeping potion so she could run away with the man she does love, which is basically a pursuit of Diamond and Rene uh, story. So they lose track of time and miss the train. 
they were forced to stay at a local bed and breakfast at but temporarily where they pretend to be married even though they're not <laughs> by taking the name of O'Brady and Colohan so that's where you see all these couples around you know making love especially during the dinner where they were being forced to kiss the next day they had to hitchhike down the road both of them were caught in a hailstorm take shelter at a nearby church where the wedding is about to take place they are being invited to the reception Anna suddenly drinks way too much which will cause her to vomit and pass out after beginning to question her own intentions with Jeremy only to find out that she does have feelings for the clan more because we learned that the clan reveals that he was once engaged to his fiance with his mother's uh, condage reign and his best friend but Anna suggested to him that now that he's in Dublin he should be able to ask for his mother's ring back. So they arrived at the hotel where Jeremy's staying. He was very surprised that Anna was proposing to her right in the lobby. So he finally uh, got a chance. Only Anna turns around, discovered that the clan had already walked out of the hotel. She actually did accept the proposal, but then he feels like something is just not right, especially at the engagement party in Boston. Of course, seeing that she was now being proposed, hoping that this is going to be the best moment of their lives, well, this is where we learn about the, uh, the story that the clan had told her. What she did was... She pulled the fire alarm, she waits, testing a 60 second concept, she had, she, she just disappeared. So, she came back to Dublin, the clan retrieves his mother's Cladis rain from his ex fiance and later on, Anna arrives back at the tavern in Dinkel, while the clan is running successfully with his business you know having to pull together balance everything that he owns by the property owner to help the community hoping things will set right maybe this will do better for, for both Anna and the clan together one way or the other um, again but it's a decent romantic comedy not perfect now, I do admit the film is predictable with its plot. I mean, it warns out Finn, has a lot of silly gags. I mean, I don't know if watching Amy Adams, you know, walking and cow done is, is her purpose of entertainment here because she could do better than that. I mean, it could have been like any other actress who would have done that and that wouldn't be the purpose. Or having to, uh, or even get covered in mud or something. Although I, I guess I didn't mind the scene where she was at the village. She was about to plug in her BlackBerry uh, cell phone to recharge, and suddenly uh, we learned that the entire village is being run by one outlet. But then it was going completely out of control because everyone's like using all these plugs. Because that, that is going to cause uh, an outlet fired. And, and it did too just when she was about to plug it in. And then suddenly <laughs> the entire village is running out of power. And that's where she says, You destroyed my Blackberry. And then he says, you destroy the entire village. <laughs> I admit it. I, I, I had chuckle on that one. <laughs> but the rest of the story is what it is. I mean, pretty simple. But I guess for, for me, though, I did love the charms of Amy Adams and 
She's the only saving grace for this movie. I love her, no doubt. Matthew Good, at times, I mean, he started out basically a jerk at first. I mean, the way he acts. But then, next thing you know, I mean, we learned about something. He changed his ways. Uh, Adam Scott's character, I mean, at times, you know, you know exactly how this is going to turn out because it does get pretty predictable. Like, at first, you think, you know, he might be the right one for her, but then, next thing you know, well, there might be a secret towards it. Uh, John Lithgow and in a very small role. I, I wish he had more screen time, sadly. But it was nice to see him. Um, I guess it's pretty much what you expect from this particular um, s story. Was that, um, from what I learned, I mean, this was basically a take on... It happened one night, um, which I know this was a very popular film a classic that was by Frank Kappa. I mean, it was a it was a screwball comedy, but a great movie with Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert. And also, I Know Where I'm Going has a very similarity vibe to that. Um, the location is perfect. I'll say this. The direction kind of went two ways about it. Um, the script, give or take, I mean, some of it is generic. Other times, it could be funny or it could just be what it is. You know? It's not a smart script, but they could have done a little better, story wise. Um, has a nice score by Randy Elderman. It's been a long time uh, composer. Has a mixture of a soundtrack of of any um, song you choose. I mean, typical songs as you get. I mean, you get like a Kelly Clarkson song. You got a Kobe Kalat song. You get a Snow Patrol. That sort of thing. Um, yes, the editing was, the editing was fast-paced. Maybe it could have had some better pacing issues that may have had suffered for the story. Yeah, there was a lot of pacing issues that this film really went for that I guess it needed to be fixed. I think there could have been better chemistry between Adams and Good. Maybe that's the problem. I mean, I probably didn't see any good chemistry, like I was hoping it would. Um, let, let's put it this way, if Amy Adams was not in this movie, it would have been just a generic uh, Hallmark Channel type of romantic comedy, or drama for that matter. Or it could have been just somewhat of a direct-to-video movie. <laughs> but for what it is, it was... I'll just accept it. Anyway, so that's Sleep Year, and I give the movie three stars. Just for the performance of Adams in this particular romantic comedy. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.